Have you ever had questions such as when should I raise my prices? When is the best time and how much should I raise my prices to? Or perhaps you've had questions about boundaries. Pam, how do I keep some boundaries so that I can still have my life, serve my clients and not feel like I'm drowning? Or perhaps you've been wondering how to support your clients better so that they can implement all of the things that you have been teaching them. Well, for Q&A Friday today, these are the amazing questions that one of my clients had that I answered and I want to share with you on this platform. Welcome back to my channel. But if you're new here, welcome. I'm Pamela Bassa and I run a brand called The Lucrative Lady. And on this channel, I talk all things sales, sales systems, social media, and strategy. My main goal on this channel is to help you to create a lucrative business. And today we have a good one for you. In fact, every Friday on this channel, I do Q&A Friday, where I answer a question that has come here on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, or it has come out of one of my sessions with my clients. Now, when it is a question from one of my clients, we have, of course, bled their face and disguised their name to protect them. But what I want you to do is to listen to the question and, of course, most importantly, the response, because that is where you are going to get a lot of clarity. And today's question is no different. So let's dive into this question, which was amazing. It is all about boundaries, raising prices, when to raise the prices, how much to raise the prices by, how to help clients to implement so that they're getting results. And of course, you are not left drowning in your business and feeling as if you are working in your business constantly instead of having the time to actually focus and work on your business so that it can continue to grow. So why not give this video a thumbs up so that other people can see this? And the other thing that a thumbs up helps me do is that it helps me know what content is working so that I can create more of that good stuff. Whilst you're there, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on your bell so that you'll be the first to see when we publish three times a week. Let's dive in. So I'm struggling in terms of pacing the program. Initially, it was supposed to be world meet every other week. Um, and so I was teaching live. I thought it turns out that it wasn't working for them because after teaching, then they're supposed to go away, do the work, um, and then be ready for the next part of it. But it wasn't working. So what I started to do instead is, okay, we'll meet every other week, but then I record the program and upload in advance so that then they're ready because there was one session we just spent nearly three hours just on questions um so yeah i'm i'm figure i'm str i struggled with that <clears throat> but i've just made up my mind look i'll record the program upload that and then um we will just do questions okay how do you think that would help them with because what you've just said is that they're not implementing um so i so to be fair, it's also to help me because I found when we're, when we're, when we're teaching live and then answering questions, either same day or next session is actually drawing me back. Mm. So, and then the excuse was like, oh, but you know, we have time to, we need time to think about what you've said and then we need able to implement. And so that's why I'm like, okay, right. Um, you'll have nearly two weeks to think and then I'll answer questions. Okay. It's also helping me. And then hopefully, so that's another thing I started to struggle with in my mind. Like, okay, so when next am I ready to launch this program mm. again if these people are struggling with, with this so much? But anyway, yeah. Okay, a, a few things. Number one is it sounds to me like they're struggling with implementation. Number one. Number two, it sounds like we might need to look at the format of your program. Okay. So what I recommend is what you do is what I recommend you do is what I did when I first started, when it was just me, because now we have obviously other people doing coaching and supporting. But when it was just me, what I did was I would have the live session teaching one week. And then the week after I would do a Q&A session and it was a pre-recorded Q&A right? So a thread would come out in the group 
for them to post any questions that they have. And then I would just get them Loom or Zoom and just record my answer. So I was really only, I was still only showing up once every two weeks live. But because they had the Q&A, it meant that it was easier for them to have their questions answered and they weren't waiting to see me again. Right? So I think you should try that format. The other thing I recommend that you do, I want you to look for your star student. It could be in this program or it could be in a previous program. It could be when you did one-on-one. -on -one. You need a star student to come in as an accountability coach. Because what I'm worried about for you and uh, you need somebody can come in as an accountability coach. Because what I'm worried about for you is that you're going to be buried in working with your clients, that it sucks away all the time from building your business, which you cannot afford to allow happen. Okay. Actually, you're actually very correct. Um, and it's interesting that you're bringing this up because I've started to think about, I didn't call it a, a, an accountability coach in my mind. I just said someone else to just, you know, someone that could collect the questions and just see where they are, whatever. Um, but I was thinking about it because between the group um, and the one-to-one, -one, the people, you know, the higher money yeah. people, the um, I am struggling. I'm struggling yeah. with implementing the things that I need to implement. I'm struggling with switching off um, from the business. And for some reason, one-to-one -one has just taken off. So I'm also thinking of raising my price for one-to-one -one yes. so that I can cut down the number of people. Good. Two more things to add to some said two things. One is the format of the program, right? I want you to review the format. Um, the second thing is um, I want you to bring in somebody to support you as an accountability coach, right? The third thing is definitely raise your price for, your, for that one-on-one -on -one adult. Definitely yeah. raise your price. The fourth thing, boundaries, right? Boundaries are so important. Now, I know some of you got really upset when the session didn't hold last session. Boundaries, Right? You have to, you see, if you set boundaries and you break the boundaries, it's on you. You're teaching people to break boundaries. So I want you to look at some of the things that I do in this program, right? Um, as much as I love you guys and I love everybody I work with, boundaries are so important because I also want you guys to learn about boundaries. I had to learn the hard way. So what do I mean by that? Boundaries are you set your time communicating with your clients, Right. Mm -hmm. And even with your kids mm -hmm. and even with your husband, I'm sorry, but there are boundaries everywhere. That's the way I look at it. You set your time and you have to respect those boundaries yourself. So if you find that between one on one, so what you do, what I do is I chunk everything down. So all my one on ones, I try to do in one day. Right. If a person cannot make their one on one, that's not on me. OK, this is the day. Well, I, I, some, it depends on how, how many, because there's quite a few. I do it over two days, but two half days or one long day where I know one day I'm in one-on-one -on -one zone. And I find that I'm actually, A, I'm more productive too. I'm helping them even more because I'm in that one-on-one -on -one zone. So I don't spread it out, right, across the whole month because I would drown, right? Anybody would. Um, the second thing is you must have your boundaries. So that means that your clients need to know this is when we communicate. This is when... This is when we communicate. This is how we communicate. And you must stick to that. You must stick to that because it's so easy to drown, right? And you get to a stage where you start to resent the actual work that you've worked so hard to create and the clients that you've worked so hard to enroll. It gets to that stage where you start to resent that. And I don't want, and that's called burnout, right? So, you know, boundary is very, very important. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Um, so in terms of boundaries, you are so correct. Um, so some of the people who have come to either join my group program or who decide to work with me were in a WhatsApp group. Mm -hmm. And so what they started to do is when they have questions, they would, DM, yeah. they would private message me on WhatsApp. And so I started to say, look, don't message me on WhatsApp because I wouldn't respond. Yeah. And then it's so interesting. You've told people that they will message you on WhatsApp when you don't respond, they will start calling you on, yes. on WhatsApp. 
And then, so for example, in the group program, I've had people send me messages, DMs on Instagram, and I've had to say to them, look, if you have any questions, ask it in our Facebook group because I can't respond to you privately. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it has caused a bit of friction, um, yeah. but I'm working on it. Yeah, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. There's a lot of work to do there. So just to confirm, because I know you've enrolled further, since the beginning of the process, uh, many people have you enrolled? all together across the different programs okay so i would say about 20 um yeah i'm so okay. so so proud of you so about uh, 20 clients this is outside of the low ticket uh, bundle yes. um, that you put out which is great because i'm going to be talking about that because that's of course our task um now um right now which is absolutely brilliant so massive massive well done um, my goal with you is to yeah. to really like i need you to push boundaries I don't want you working with 20 people at 3K or at 1,500. I'd rather you were working with five people at 5K. Yeah. Right? Or 10 people at 5K. You'd make more money. So the numbers will reduce, right? The number of your clients will reduce, but you'll find that you have your time back. You'd get better quality people. So this is our goal for 2022, okay? For when we relaunch for you, all right? So put that in your pocket okay. and... Remind, remember that to remind me that. Do you see my point, right? Because you're in charge of your process. Yeah. Just remember that we've got to scale up, okay? Welcome back. So I hope that you got a lot of value from that. As you can see, creating a business is one thing. Getting clients is another thing, but keeping those clients happy, keeping them implement, and whilst you maintain some level of boundaries so that you can actually spend time with your family, all of these things are real problems that as your business begins to grow and scale, you are going to experience. So I want you to comment below this video and let me know what clarity you received from watching this. And of course, if you have any questions that you want me to answer for Q&A Friday, comment below with the uh, word question in capital and ask below this video. And you never know, I may feature your question in the next Q&A. But don't forget to come back every time we publish three times a week on this channel on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays at 6 p.m at London time, so make sure you come back. Before you go, if you want to check out the other Q&As that we have had, they have all been incredibly amazing. Make sure you check out this playlist, which is our Q&A playlist, and you get to get a ton of more clarity from that.